couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which I want to discuss with you the difference between how amateur musicians see finger style and music in general and how pros see finger style and music in general. Now, the quick answer would be that you have um, two different sets of music within any given composition. You have the harmony and the melody. Now, that's the obvious thing but it's the key to everything because the melody is in front and the chords are in the back while amateurs see everything as being in front and amateurs are always aware of everything that's supposed to be played and that creates a kind of an overburdening and kind of an overload and the sense of how in the world am I ever going to get this under my fingers, while the pros actually just focus on the melody, while the chords are background, not just technically, but also practically, okay? For example, if you have um, a gospel style blues, like I taught uh, in the gospel style blues lesson, then you have something like this. thinking about the chords at all. I'm just letting my fingers flow through the rhythm and fill the rhythm in in interesting ways while focusing on the melody that I want to get. The melody is in the front, the melody is in the front of my mind while all the rest is in the background. Now I know that it's easier said than done especially after you've done it for years but that's the approach that you have to cultivate from the start because if you have to think about the number of notes you have per bar and you have to count then you're interfering in your own flow of the music. If you have to count one, da, da, two, da, da, three, da, da, four, da, da, okay, and you have to keep the count and think about how many notes you can fit between melody notes, then everything becomes forefront. Everything becomes an important note, while the forefront notes are a lot more important than the background notes. Even if, you, um, even if you just do a very simple style of E minor improvisation, just like I showed you in the How to Create Beautiful Music uh, Using Two Chords lesson, uh, like this. Okay? I'm only thinking about the high notes. All the rest, I just let the, the fingers do it themselves. And I know what you're thinking. You can do it because you've practiced it. But actually, I don't think I ever practiced fixed patterns because fixed patterns tend to stay that way. I just uh, think about the rhythm. I think about the rhythm. I think about I can I feel the rhythm, I feel the beat and I feel the sense of what I want to convey and then I just order my fingers to follow the rhythm in any way possible because um, rhythm is more important than anything. If you have just a random set of notes, random, completely random set of notes, and you have a good rhythm, you can still make music out of it. Even if you just take random chords, Just random jazz chords that you have no idea how they connect because you don't know jazz theory. You can still take those and create an interesting expression out of it because you focus on the rhythm you want to convey. Just rhythm, okay, with random notes. Okay? starts to make sense. I can start refining it, okay? But the whole solution to the randomness of it all 
was rhythm. And it's the same with the simple stuff as well. Um, if you have... Okay, just uh, C, G, A minor, F line. Okay? Then you can feel the rhythm and then everything will fall into place. Try to try it yourself. Try to take C, G, A minor, and F. No special embellishments, just the rhythm. And the more you get used to playing around with the rhythm, you will see that the fingers tend to fill in the spaces by themselves. And that's something that every professional musician knows. Okay, and it's rarely talked about this front and background thing because it sounds a bit pompous. Yeah, I can create music on the spot, but you can do it. You can do it. You can create music on the spot. That's what I'm trying to convey here on Lick and Riff most of all. You can create music on the spot no matter your skill level, okay? You know, just play the rhythm that you're comfortable uh, um, with at the moment. Just wherever is convenient for you on the scale of complexity, that's what you need to play at the moment. And the more you do it, the better you get at it and the, the better your skills get. So just take C, G, A minor and F. Just take a very simple blues progression and just try to fill in the empty notes. Um... Okay? Just try to fill in the rhythm using the chord notes. You don't even have to arpeggiate. Just try to fill in the music randomly. And if you try it, you'll get better at it. And if you get better at it, you'll become a pro musician. Uh, it's not the only prerequisite to being a pro, but that's how pros view music. They just look at the melody and what chord they need to play, and they rarely think about how they're gonna play the chord. They just know that it's there, and you can play around with it any way you feel like. And that's being a musician. And it's a lot of fun. And you should try it even if you think you're not up to it yet. Because there's never a good time to start. And the sooner you start, the sooner you get better. And the sooner you might become a pro. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's, everything here is for free. And there's a ton of stuff already. So bye for now. And I'll see you in the next lesson.